Good morning, everyone. This is Lori Delkaradecki with the Nashville Networking Business Luncheon. So we do these several times a month all across Middle Tennessee in person on Thursdays and Fridays. You can see our schedule at NashvilleNetworkingBusinessLuncheon.com. You can also join us in our groups. We have a Facebook group as well as a LinkedIn group. And then every single Tuesday right here on Zoom. So if you're not meeting in person yet, or if you just don't want to get out and drive, you can meet us right here on Zoom as well each week. So we always have a 10 to 15 minute speaker who talks to us about different tips, tricks, ideas, things that can help us both in our personal as well as our business life to help get us to that next level. And after that, we're going to go around the room. Everyone will share their business cards right here on Zoom. We'll be virtually. And then in person, we exchange them. And then everyone will have one minute to give us your name, what you do for a living, how we can better refer other people to you, and what you're kind of looking for in your business. Like, what is your ask? And then we're going to show, um, I'm going to show you a quick little video about a great tool you can use in your personal as well as your business life that will help you also to get to that level of success that you want to get to. And then we will have some open networking at the beginning and at the end of each meeting. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. So please give your attention to our speaker, Miss Wendy Lee Stevenson. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me, Lori. So I'm new to the group too. Colin, another newbie here. <laughs> um, I did meet in person in Spring Hill. That was fun, got to meet John in person there. Um, so I will tell you a little bit about me and then jump into some training here. Um, real quick question though, by show of hands, how many of you use social media to grow your business? Okay, good. All right, awesome. So just wanna make sure <laughs> I could add value to you today. So I am a mom of seven, I live in Spring Hill, Thompson Station area um, and work from home. I've been a full-time entrepreneur um, for seven years, actually today is my seven year anniversary. Um, and spent 14 years in corporate world, sales and marketing, uh, dabbled in digital marketing when banner ads started coming out, you know, internet marketing, all that, and kind of fell into online business. I, um, got into, um, entrepreneurship through network marketing and, um, a few months into starting my business, I actually got laid off of my job. It was my second layoff in a row. I had never, like, I was one of those people I always, you know, grew in my career and got promotions. And then for some reason, twice in a row, got laid off. And so um, when that happened the second time, I was like, I'm done. I want to be home with my kids anyway. At the time, I only had three kids. Um, so my really quick story about how I became a mom of seven, I had three biological kids. My husband and I decided we wanted to adopt. Um, we sponsored a little boy in Africa from the time he was six years old. When he was 12, we decided we wanted to adopt. We found out he had a brother. We went to visit him in Africa. And it was like two months before we put in our adoption paperwork and we fell in love with a little girl there. And the same week found out we were pregnant with our fourth child. So we literally went from three kids to seven kids in 16 months. And um, so life has been very different for us. And we're thankful that my husband and I are both full-time entrepreneurs and we get to work from home especially in this crazy time we have here, right? Um, so my specialty is helping businesses grow using social media. So I wanted to just bring you guys three tips to increase your presence on social. Um, and a lot of times we, in business, we focus on a Facebook page, um, like, a, like a fan page or a business page. But I wanna talk to you guys about how you can use your personal profile to expand your reach. Um, a couple of quick things about a fan page. I don't know if you guys have those in your business, if you use them, but Facebook has set that up. So they want you to pay for it, right? So when you have a fan page or, um, you know, business page, the way that you get the most exposure is by paying for ads. And it's really hard to build that organically um, and create engagement there. And so I always encourage entrepreneurs, especially small businesses, to have also your profile. So your Facebook profile, the one that you have to create, that's more the personal page, um, to grow your reach and expand your presence online. And 
Um, that you can do organically and you can drive people over to your fan page. So one quick tip, this isn't in my three, but I'm bringing you three tips. But before that, um, just have in your personal profile, if you have a fan page where it says where you work, work at, and it's really easy for people to click and see more about your business there. Um, but you can really drive traffic through your personal profile. Okay, so three tips. Number one is to set a goal for how many new connections you want online each day or each week and um, constantly getting more eyes on you. I have built um, three businesses online and my most current business, I close my biggest sales. Okay, I have a really high ticket item that I close my biggest sales from cold leads that I warm up in about three or four days. And so um, those are the people that wind up paying me the most. And so I want to give you guys some tips for that. And the first one is finding those connections. So three different places I find people to connect with online. First of all, hopefully you all know your ideal client, right? Who is that ideal person that you're marketing to that you want to connect with? And the three places I find those typically, and I'm going to speak with regard to Facebook, um, you can apply this to LinkedIn, you can apply it to Instagram, um, but in groups. So Facebook specifically, I know LinkedIn is doing groups now as well, but finding people in groups and making the connection. And don't overthink the connection, just send people friend requests. All the time I have people that build online, they're like, but the rules say I'm not supposed to prospect in there, or I'm not supposed to advertise my business. And I'm not saying do that. I'm saying, go send a friend request, go create a new connection. If you see that somebody, you know, I target Facebook groups that hold my ideal client in them. And, um, and then I, I send them a friend request. And so also friends of friends, that's an easy one, right? Make more friends, sell more stuff. Exactly. Friends of friends. So the suggested friends that come up, or if you have a really great client, going and looking at their friends list and connecting with the people there, right? And then I call it OPP. I grew up, you know, born 80 baby here. Um, but <laughs> OPP, so other people's people. Find out where your ideal client, where does your ideal client shop? What groups do they hang out with? Who are they following? So I like to, I target entrepreneurs typically. And so um, there's an entrepreneur, there's a trainer in my industry um, that's really big and, and has a lot of really quality followers and his name's Bob. And so I love Bob, but he doesn't do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I do, he does group coaching. And so I, it's a great place for me to find leads. So I go to Bob's page and I take his people, <laughs> right? I friend request the people that are following Bob because I know that they, we have the same ideal client and that I offer something that he doesn't. And so um, going and finding those places, I mean, Tony Robbins or, you know, for a while, a lot of female entrepreneurs were following Rachel Hollis um, and, you know, going in and figuring out who you can do this on Instagram too, LinkedIn, but Instagram, it's really easy. Um, I have a client of mine who is targeting RNs and she's like, where can I go to find other RNs? Well, I said, what kind of scrubs do you wear? And she told me the brand. We went to that brand on Instagram and just started prospecting the people that are commenting and liking on those photos for that brand. So think about where your ideal client shopping, add connections. So when you add co the connections and you marry that with really good marketing, right? So these people, what happens? You send a connection request, then they're going to come check you out. So step number two, tip number two is to prime your profile. All right, so here you wanna look at your bio, your cover photo. There's a lot of real estate that you can take advantage of that many people don't on their social media. So if you go and check out my social media, my cover photo, it says click here. Does your cover photo actually take you anywhere? No, but when you click on it, a caption pops up. And in there, I created a link so people can join my private community. Whereas where I facilitate a lot of my, I bring in a lot of leads there, right? So using that real estate, we have something called a feature photo on your profile on Facebook. And a lot of people just throw up photos of their family, whatever. You can put one big photo in there and right above it, there's conveniently placed any website that you put in your bio would be right above it. 
So you can use your feature photo and direct people. I direct people to a 10 minute call with me, um, you know, to do a quick audit of their business, right? So they can click on that link and get a call with me. Um, and then again, going back to, um, you know, connecting at that point to your fan page or your business profile, put where you work and lead people over there. All right. And you can even direct them to do that in your feature photo to go connect or follow my business at the link above. Um, with your bio, you want, when you're doing all of this, you want to think about your ideal client, you friend request them or follow them or whatever. They come look at your profile. What's going to make them say, I want to engage, right? I want to accept this friend request or this follow request and I want to engage. So think about from your client's perspective, if they come to your profile and all they see is you selling your product or your service, they're not going to want to connect. You've got to add value. So that leads me to tip number three, which is to add value. And a couple ways to do this um, is to split up. Has anyone ever read the book by Gary Vaynerchuk? Jab, 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 right hook. Great book. Okay. So the jabs are where you add value, right? And then you right hook and, and do your sale. But adding value constantly. People like Gary V, they grew by adding value. By, you know, and I have grown, all three of my businesses are thriving because I create content that people engage with. So I wanna give you some tips for content creation. Um, I try and stick with what I call the four E's. So rotating between empowerment posts, entertainment posts, um, educational posts and engagement posts. Okay. So empower, entertain, educate, and engage. And those four things lined up with my brand. So what I'm about is faith, family, and business. And I try and create content with those four E's and my three, what I call storylines, my faith, family, and business. And so with entertainment, right, people want to come in and, and not always be so serious, right? Show the fun, lighter side of you. Entertain. Um, and for the tip for the ladies, I don't know if the guys would do this much, but <laughs> I, you know, part of what's entertaining about my house is I got a million kids, right? And there's always, you know, something crazy going down. So I'm not like naturally funny. I think I've been really funny like five times in my life. And so <laughs> I go to Pinterest and I'm like funny mom quotes, right? Or it, looking for something that's entertaining there around the fact that, you know, being a mom of a lot of kids. And I find the greatest stuff in there and people crack up and share my stuff and all that. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of stole it from Pinterest. But um, so figure out where you can pull from. You don't have to be ultimately creative. You just got to know where to find creative things, right? Okay. Um, so then the other thing is creating curiosity. So um, depending on what your business is, everybody's different, but um, I'm big on creating curiosity and not just putting everything front and center. Here's the deal. Um, if you have a you want to know who's interested in what service or product that you have. And so creating curiosity, asking questions that are going to um, get your, your audience to engage with you and basically raise their hand without knowing that they're doing it right to what you have to offer. That's what you want. So um, for instance, I have in one of my businesses, I sell collagen. So I asked a question, who uses collagen every day? I didn't say, hey, I have the best collagen out there and here's all about it and here's the link to buy it and da, da, da. I said, who uses collagen daily? And every single person that responded, whether they use it or not, is now a prospect of mine, right? So um, come up with the, whether you're in finances, real estate, what are those questions you can ask that your ideal client would engage with and let them let you know that they could use your service or your product. Um, and then finally, I gotta talk about live video and I'll wrap it up because I think I got one minute left. Um, live video, there's no better way to get people into your funnel than letting them see who you are. I have people in my circles that act like I'm famous. <laughs> 
it's the weirdest thing. I get on Zooms with some, sometimes with people and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm talking to Wendy. Why? From live video. There's nothing else, right? I haven't done anything exceptional in the world. Mm -hmm. Hi, there's a kid. Um, but I do live video and people start to build this relationship with me that I don't even know about, right? They're feeling connected because there's only so much that you can put through in a post. And actually I wanna, um, oh, I don't have it up here. Everyone Communicates Few Connect is a book by John Maxwell, it's amazing. Um, but one of the things he was talking about is um, the fact that what you communicate in words is only like a small percentage of what people get from you. It's body language, it's voice inflection, it's all of those things that communicate. And so live video is the best way to create a following of raving fans. So that's what I got for you guys. Thanks so much for letting me be here and share, Lori. Awesome, perfect. Thank you so much, Wendy. So many great tips. I hope you guys were taking notes. I was taking notes and I've been doing this 28 years and I was taking notes. So hopefully you were taking notes. If you weren't, make sure you go back to the National Networking Business luncheon page and re-watch the video and so if you are watching us live make sure you join us next week right here on zoom or if you are meeting in person all over middle tennessee see our schedule at national networking business luncheon.com or also on our group on facebook as well as linkedin this ends our recorded portion and we will see you next week